All right, welcome back to Cool Classics. Today we're going to be looking at the life and career of Howard Kane, who played Major Hockstetter on Hogan's Heroes. That's where he won me over, and I had to dig into his history. Here we go. He was born Howard Cohen on January 2nd, 1926 in Nashville, Tennessee, into a Jewish family. At the age of 13, Cohen moved with his family to New York City, where he began studying acting. Learning to suppress his southern accent, he went on to become a master of 32 foreign and American dialects. So not only could he speak multiple languages, but he could speak them in many different ways. Now that is a heck of an accomplishment. Cohen served in the United States Navy during World War II from 1944 to 1946, fighting the Japanese in the Pacific Theater. After the war, he studied drama at Columbia University, where he graduated summa cum laude. He changed his last name from Cohen to Kane when he started to get work on Broadway, and man did he get a lot of work. His list of credits is unbelievable. Just to try and put this in perspective for you, he acted in more than 750 live and television performances. That's just way too many to go through or even sort out. Let me give you just a little sample of the movies that he played in before he landed the part on Hogan's Heroes. From the Terrace in 1960. Pay or Die in 1960. He also played the husband of Judy Garland in Judgment in Nuremberg in 1961. Brush Fire in 1962, The Man from the Diners Club in 63, and the list goes on. Since I don't know too much about Broadway and he has such a large list, I'm just going to go ahead and skip that for now. But I can tell you the highlights of this long list of TV shows that he was on. In 1953, he played on a TV series called Marty. In 1957, The Californians for eight episodes. In 1959, Peter Gunn. In 1960, a lot of stuff, but Gun Smoke stands out. 1961, Two Faces West TV series. Never heard of it, but I have to look that up next. Now I'm curious. 1962, My Three Sons. The same year, Leave it to Beaver episode Eddie the Businessman. He played a crooked dairy foreman. You know, I've seen that episode. I need to go rewatch it. I'm curious. 1963, The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis, episode The Call of the Like Wild. Same year, The Twilight Zone, episode He's Alive. Now, in 1965, things get dicey. He was on Alfred Hitchcock Hour, Get Smart, My Favorite Martian, then Hogan's Heroes. Okay, now here comes some freaky facts about Hogan's Heroes for all you geeks like me. His first appearance was Season 1, Episode 17. It was called Happy Birthday, Adolf. He played Major Keitel. Now in Season 2, Episode 5, called The Battle of Stalag 13, he played Colonel Feldkamp. Now later in Season 2 is when he first appears as Major Hochstetter, the feared Gestapo officer who strongly suspects the prisoners, particularly Colonel Hogan, are engaged in clandestine activities. I'll say they were but he's never able to confirm his suspicions. Well, yeah, that's what makes it so good. You know, he had a lot of cool catchphrases himself. He's always like, who is this man? <laughs> he was always so high strung, he'd go, bah, and storm out of a room. <laughs> it was so, he really worked the character good. And obviously it worked because they wanted him back more and more. He ended up playing in 37 episodes. Oh, they were all good ones too. After Hogan's Heroes ended, he still worked on Broadway, on TV shows, and in the movies. In 1976, he played in Helter Skelter. He was Charles Manson's lawyer. In 1979, he first started doing voiceover work. Started with Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo, the TV series. Doesn't say which character he played, but I bet it was pretty cool. Um, actually, he reprised the role in 1986 for the new Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo show, along with Johnny Quest. You know, he was really talented. You don't get on Broadway and play in that many shows without having a lot of acting chops. I mean, plus, you know, he knew all those languages with the different dialects. Check this out. In his early years in Tennessee, he always was fascinated with the Appalachian five-string bluegrass banjo and began mastering it. From the mid-60s to 1990, he took home 29 prominent banjo and fiddle contest wins in the Southland for both the best traditional banjo and traditional singing. He was also a popular folk singer and appeared at a number of prominent folk clubs and folk festivals. Can you imagine going up there and you're like just chilling and thinking, okay, who's coming up next? And you look and you go, wait a second, who is this man? 
Sadly, Howard died on December 28, 1993, just five days short of his 68th birthday. What a super talented man, one of my favorites on Hogan's Heroes. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, click on one of my others, take a look around, see what's going on. I'll be back with more cool classics.